Hello guys, welcome to the beginner account video. Today, uh, I've been actually taking a little break on this account since uh, Nightmare Tower ended. I, I was still logging in once in a while, doing like a challenge, some faction wars, so I can get a gold card in the end of the season. Just the minimum stuff, though I wasn't really grinding that much. Uh, I I'm just playing some Shao Kahn Tower. It's still pretty easy, even though my team is much weaker than uh, my enemy. I'm still destroying it so far. But I'm in no rush to uh, to get there. So, uh, I wanted to talk about the Faction Wars and the Ruby Store. I uh, already made a video on it before, not in this account, but like in a general tutorial, where I basically say that you shouldn't buy characters, you should buy gear only with using uh, your rubies and only go for one piece uh, at a time until you max it out. I want to I wanna make some adjustments to that statement. After playing on the beginner account, I, I actually, I actually want to change something about that statement. So uh, I did make an, one purchase with rubies. I bought myself a classic Ermac. I know I broke my own rules, but classic Ermac can do insane work for you if you're a beginner. In towers, in Nightmare Tower, I used Classic Ermac on every single boss battle, and he was doing insane amount of damage. Just, just take a look at his passive. Wait, no, 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 I'm not gonna buy another copy. There's no reason to buy another copy. You just buy him once. Don't even level him up. Don't fuse him. He is not gonna be doing any damage beside the damage from his passive. There's literally no point to waste any gear or uh, levels. You, I mean, you can level him up just if you play him in Faction Wars or something, it's not a big deal. But honestly, he doesn't need anything to do what he what you need him to do. Now, let's read his passive. Opponents start with a fight with Soul Siphon Dot, which takes 10% of their health and prevents recovery over 30 seconds. Even if he is decked out or defeated, which is absolutely incredible. This dot is not affected by any modifiers or resistances, which means no matter what bosses they are, if they're immune to dots, if they're... like, nothing can prevent Ermac from doing his thing. 10% of their health is insane considering if we're fighting bosses with super weak teams. This gonna cut a uh, number of tries you use on every boss battle by half. Because, uh... When I fight bosses, if it's a difficult boss, it, it might take me like 10 tries to do it. Ermac! Okay, it's 10% not of their max health. But first, like, 3 runs with this guy drains basically roughly 25% of the maximum health of your enemies. It's like uh, 10, then like maybe 9, and maybe 7 in the last... Uh, battle something like this because because they have less and less health with every, every battle so it's 25% health for zero sacrifice of each enemy which is absolutely incredible and uh, another reason to have classic Ermac in your uh, in your battles in your team when you're fighting bosses in any tower any any unless there is one boss or two bosses even two bosses I think it's it's worth it if there is one boss though it may not be worth it because he's not gonna be gaining as like he, he does 10% of all for all characters. If it's only one character, it's uh, significant, si significantly decreases his value. But doing this for for two or three characters is absolutely incredible. Also, there is absolutely no point to have three damage dealers on your team because first of all, you will not have enough good tower gear to put on, on your entire team, most likely. So, you're you're gonna be doing much more damage if you put your best gear on one or two characters, just make them insanely good. This will allow you uh, to output so much more damage. Also, uh, this guy has Snare on Special 2, so I kinda recommend you to get him to Special 2, to, to level 2, to unlock his Special 2, to get that Snare, because Sometimes it can be useful when for the bosses uh, uh, He can be useful to absorb x-ray or huge damage attack like special 2 from the boss and he also Like his explosion don't even count on it. He's not gonna do any damage at fusion zero to bosses That's not even the point 
but his special too can actually snare your enemy. He can snare them and then maybe he'll die, maybe he'll get revenant and you will be able to use him again. But having that snare on special 2, or a shield on special 3, if you know, once you do x-ray attack, every single character on your team will get a shield. So if you can tag with this guy, do a few combos, and then uh, do special 2 or special 3 and tag out, it's gonna, it's gonna give your whole team huge value. And again, doesn't matter, the damage doesn't matter. It's the buffs or debuffs he does, and they are not affected by fusion level. So, again, I don't... I honestly don't think that Fusion 0 Ermac and Fusion 10 Ermac will do much diff- I mean, obviously Fusion 10 Ermac can even do some damage to lower the level bosses, but like in general, you don't want to be using him, you don't want to be wasting good gear on him, you want to give your best gear to the characters that are best equipped to deal in damage. For me, it's Silver Kenshi and Combat Cup Johnny. I use those two guys to melt my bosses. And this guy just provides silent support from the background. I'm gonna review the strategy for this once the new Cold War Tower comes out, and then we're gonna we're gonna do some boss ba battles on this account. I'm gonna go into the tower straight away this time. I'm not wasting any more time. I'm gonna try to get as far as I can. Try to get some of that new Cold War gear, even though I don't have any Cold War Diamond characters, but it's okay. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to use uh, Classic Ermac the most efficient way. By the way, day number 53. I haven't missed a single day since I started playing, so I've been I've, I've been playing this account for 53 days. Haven't been grinding for the last two weeks, probably nearly at all. But I still completed uh, the Kita challenge. I might even go for a hard challenge because, I mean, why not? It's some free coins and free fusion on Takeda, and I I do have a lot of scorpion characters and mo like requirements here are super easy to complete this tower. So I'm, I'm probably gonna go for for the hard challenge as well. So, now, once you got one classic Ermic, I don't think there is any other character in there that is worth investing, at least in the beginning. I think for 1600 you can get four pieces of gear and it's gonna help you in survival and uh, it, mostly in faction wars, because most of this gear has uh, some positive effects in faction wars. So. The one I'm gonna go for in the beginning is gonna be Blaze. Again, another thing I'm changing about my previous statements. There's a few pieces of gear that actually gonna do a lot of work at Fusion Zero. For example, 50% chance to apply fire to an active enemy. It's it's a pretty decent thing, and also it has fire damage, and there's a few characters that can do fire attacks, like my Hanzo will benefit from, from this piece of gear tremendously. So I'm gonna buy this. Let's before I buy this, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna see which other pieces I'm gonna get. Uh, now this one chance to steal enemy power at the start of the match. Now this is this is pretty good. Thirty uh, percent chance. It, it's it's a good counter for X-ray teams. But let's be honest, when you are a beginner, you are not gonna be facing X-ray teams most likely. Like it's super rare. So I'm not gonna go for Devastator. I feel like Blaze's Life Force. Applying the fire, dealing a little bit extra damage, it's just a little bit more useful. Datusha is absolutely useless piece of gear. Now, Bloody Tomahawk, again, doesn't do that much until you get him to Fusion X, because that's his main power, but... Slight chance to drain power in Special 2, 20% chance means it's probably gonna not proc almost anywhere, or when it does proc, it's not gonna make so much difference, so I'm not gonna go for Bloody Tomahawk unless we can max it out. And now this one, chance to reflect damage when blocking. Only 10%, 5% damage boost. Again, not gonna make much difference. Also has a very good uh, Fusion X uh, attack. So we're gonna hold off on that one. Now this one has reduced power cost and special attacks. What I like about this is that it's, it's basically guaranteed. You're not gonna have it proc like once in a while. It's gonna proc every single time just for a small amount. And 10% is not big of a deal, but if, you ha if you're using some ca uh, characters like Scorpion when you're going to be spamming Special 1, it can actually add up to some pretty decent difference. And when you max it out, you're going to have power generation boost. So I think out of all three, I would go for Bloody Voodoo Doll as the first card to max out, because power generation and reduced cost on special attacks is uh, extremely powerful in this game, especially in the current meta, uh, especially in survival and... Uh, current state of faction wars. Uh, let's see the other pieces. Lethal blow chance. Now this one actually, what I like about this one, 
is that it's it, it, everything is unlocked. There is nothing locked at this point. It has 10% unblockable chance on special attacks, lethal blow chance. It's a very good piece of gear. And it's gonna increase as you fuse it, but at least nothing is locked in the beginning. So I, I would actually consider going for the Moloch's Balls and Chain as well. Shadow Sash is not very useful. Blind... Oh wait, Blind is not even... Blind only unlocks later. Un um, opponent unblockable attack chance reduction is actually pretty powerful, but 20%... They're still gonna break your block, even at 20%. Opponent critical chance reduction, resistance to poison or bleed, resistance to slow and stun. Now this is a very powerful piece of gear to put in the beginning. And also, I don't think that the thing that on Fusion X is really useful. I think, like, the, it's big numbers out of Fusion Zero. So I'm gonna go for a uh, Sindel Signet Ring gonna get one of them as uh, and you can see how much it will increase uh, to fuse it so uh, next fusion will only increase it by one or two percent so you're basically getting like almost m uh, like the most out of it at fusion zero you can calculate that at fusion 10 it's gonna go uh, critical hit chance reduction is gonna go to 40 percent and resistance is gonna go to 50 percent which means you're getting more than half of this piece of gear at fusion zero so this piece of gear i don't see the point to fuse it until you uh, get some extra ruby so sindel Sign signet ring i think is the best piece to invest in the beginning because it gives you the most value at fusion zero after this i'm gonna go now i don't know should i go for blazes life force or should i go for bloody voodoo doll I'm actually gonna go for Bloody Voodoo Doll, because I'm, I think I'm gonna start uh, on working to max it out. So I might as well buy one. So as you see, we start with 10 and 5, and let's see what's the increase. To 0.5% and 5.5%. So you see, this piece also gives you most of its value at Fusion Zero. So I, 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 I have to go back to my previous uh, observations and make a change. I really think that some pieces you should invest in the beginning, like buy a few of them because you get most of the value at Fusion Zero. Like, 25% power generation obviously is going to be an incredible boost, but we'll get there eventually. I'm going to probably fuse it a few times, because, as I said, I'm going to be working on getting this piece as high as possible. Also, I wouldn't... Another reason not to invest in Bloody Tomahawk, or Datusha, or Devastator, or Moloch's Ball and Chain, any weapons. I wouldn't invest in any weapons in Faction War Store in the beginning, because... You want to be having unblockable weapons, and weapon is the only piece of gear that can be unblockable. Uh, well, there is an exception. Uh, exception is uh, Scarlet's gear, the blood... Uh, I forgot what it's called. The Scarlet's piece of gear. It, it gives you unblockable on special 3. And I think there's another one. I think there's another piece of gear that gives you unblockable. Uh, but the, all, most of the... Unblockable pieces of gear are weapons, so you don't want to you don't want to be having anything else in your weapon slot ex instead of uh, unblockable. Also, most of the armors are really good; they can give you extra health. But accessories, let's be honest, accessories pretty much suck most of them, ex except uh, like s certain accessories are amazing only when they're maxed out. Like uh, soul medallion is amazing when it's maxed out. Uh, Terminator piece of gear is... Terminator actually has a decent accessory, you can use it in any fusion, it's pretty good. But it's it's really hard to get good accessories. So I'm gonna be investing in accessories. I'm probably gonna invest in Blaze's Life Force uh, for one fusion, just to use it in Faction Wars. Just one. You can see 5% and 50. Let's see, uh, let's see what's the increase. 55 and 7. Actually, this is not a terrible increase compared to others. This is solid, like you get from 5 to 7, it's a solid increase. So, this piece of gear is not the worst uh, in case to uh, increase its value. So, I would, uh, yeah, I would probably go to Fabrizio's Life Force soon after I finish Bloody Voodoo Doll. And, uh, yes, uh, what about Shansung Stone? Again, reco uh, reduced power cost on all special attacks and recovery boost. Actually, I'm going for this one. Its main ability is going to be insanely useful in Faction Wars, but as it is, it's a very powerful piece of gear. Recovery is amazing right now. It's it's 
one of the most important stats for survival, and survival is your main source of Faction Wars points, so... And reduced power cost on special attacks... Shansung Stone. And let's see how much is it gonna be increasing. 10, 20? Let's see what's gonna be, uh... What's gonna be the increase. It's gonna go to 10.5 at 21. Again, this is absolutely negligible increase. So, there is not much point to, to max it out, unless to get uh, to the Fusion X ability. Yeah, this is a very good piece of gear. So, this is, in my opinion, the pieces of gear you should invest in the beginning of the game. Bloody Voodoo Doll, Blaze's Life Force, Shansung Stone, and Siddle Sitting Ring. I, I wouldn't invest in any of the weapons. Shokan Armor, it's not terrible, it's pretty decent. Perfection Wars. And you can you only have 10% chance to reflect special attack damage, so it's it's gonna proc once in a while, but honestly, I think it's far inferior to other pieces. But honestly, I would probably work on uh, on the Shokan armor and before I start working on any of the weapons. Alright, this is my reasoning, guys. Let me know in the comments what do you think. And yeah, I know I changed my mind a little bit since my last video I made on the Faction Wars store, but I also haven't played beginner account in a while, and now I can understand and see much more value in uh, investing in certain pieces of gear and I would honestly before I would just go for bloody tomahawk but I just don't need weapons you can also look at your collection and see uh, what are you missing but honestly most of the weapons are great at fusion zero most of the accessories are terrible at fusion zero so I would go for accessories first thank you for watching subscribe for more and let me know in the comments if this video was helpful and if you agree or disagree with me and I'm gonna see you in the next one subscribe not to miss it Goodbye.